The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. You're welcome to lesson 90 of your distance learning session in advanced level geology with TC Innocent. Before we examined the title and content of our lesson 90, it is necessary for us to look at the correction of the assignment that was given at the end of our previous lesson. Our previous lesson was on elements of food, where we looked at the definition of food as a flexion or a wrinkle formed in a rock or that affects pre-existing structures. We try to look at the parts of a fold or what we call elements of a fold. At the end of that lesson, we were asked to list and define three of those elements. We take the first element, which is the axial plane. By definition, the axial plane indicated is a surface that carries the axial lines of successive folded layers within a fold. That is, we have a folded layer here, we have a folded layer here, here and here. All of these layers have their axial lines. A surface that successfully carries all the axial lines or a plane that carries all the axial lines of those folded layers constitute an axial plane. We take fold hinge indicated here. By definition, we say it is the point of maximum curvature or the point with the smallest radius on a fold profile. The next structure or element of fold, inflection point. Inflection point is the point on a profile where concavity changes or where an anticline passes to a syncline or vice versa. It can also be looked upon as a point of zero curvature. The inflection point helps us to plot tangents on the fold surface and the intersection of such tangents give us interlimb angles of the two limbs that define the fold. We now examined our lesson of the day drawn from structural geology and the titled classification of folds. Our lesson 90 titled classification of folds will unfold following the overview. Lesson objectives, we are going to look at those changes that we intend to see in the learner at the end of this lesson. Entry requirement or prerequisite what the learner should be versed with 
in order to better understand our lesson 90. We shall look at the real life situation, carry on with learning activities, look at some application exercises, and end our lesson with an assignment. We start with lesson objective. At the end of this lesson 90, titled Classification of Folds, learners should be able to outline the basis for such classification and to group folds under the different basis outlined as lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, learners should be able to outline basis of classification and group folds following these basis. As entry requirement, folds come in the form of waves. And waves are integral part of physics and mathematics. So, a background knowledge of elementary physics and elementary mathematics is important. Ten tectonic forces and the different broad group of rocks should also be of importance in order to better understand our lesson 90. So as entry requirement, we need basic knowledge of physics and mathematics tectonic forces which we have already examined and the different groups of rocks. We take a life situation. The nature of forces that have acted on rocks millions of years ago can be understood today and the evolution of events re-established. These forces are not acting again. But today, we can understand their nature and how they acted. How is this possible? Through chemical analysis of rocks, through structural analysis of rocks, or through mineralogical analysis. We carry on with our learning activities, where we shall examine basis for classification of foods, and under this basis for classification of folds, we shall look at geometric classification and genetic classification. Folds come in several styles. The profiles of folds come in varied ways and from varied origins. A proper understanding of folds requires a grouping based on similarities. Here we choose two bases of grouping. Grouping them based on their geometry, that is, their attitude in space. Geometric classification. Grouping them based on the forces responsible for their formation or their origin, which we call genetic classification. So, we are going to begin with Geometric classification, which takes into account the attitude of the fold profile in space. Under this basis of classification, we are going to group folds based on direction to which their limbs close, or we are taking into account facing here. Recall during our last lesson, we had defined closure and we had defined facing. Attitude of axial plane. We had defined what an axial plane is. Now we are going to group folds based on how their axial planes look like. Deep of the limbs. How similar or how different are the inclinations of the limbs of a fold? Continuity of axial surface. Nature of fold profile, interlimb angle, or tightness here. We take the first aspect, direction of closure of limbs. We had defined closure 
as the direction to which the limbs of a fold converge. On this basis, folds can be defined as anticlines, synclines, or neutral folds. Anticlines are up-closing folds with older beds at the core. It means stratigraphic succession is known. Synclines are down-closing folds with younger beds at their core. When a fold closes sideways, the fold is described as being neutral because we cannot say whether it is closing up or down. Similar to anticlines and synclines, we can talk about antiforms and synforms. They are respectively up-closing folds and down-closing folds. But how different are they from anticlines and synclines? In antiforms and synforms, the stratigraphic succession is unknown. So if we describe anticlines and synclines here and do not demonstrate antiforms and synforms, it is because in terms of closure, which we are considering here, all of them are the same. But the difference is that in one, which is anticline and syncline, we know their stratigraphic succession. Reason we can mention the position of the older bed. We look at the next basis under geometric classification, which is the attitude of axial plane. The axial plane which we define as that surface or that plane that carries the fold axis of all the fold dead layers within a fold can be used to group folds. When the axial plane is vertical, it means our fold is upright. The axial plane, that's the case we have here, vertical, our fold is upright. The axial plane can be inclined, as is the case we have here. Then we have an inclined fold. The axial plane can be overturned, or the limbs of a fold can be overturned. In that case, we have an overturned fold. The axial plane can as well be horizontal. In this case, we describe the fold as being recommended. So, on the basis of attitude of axial plane, we can define upright, inclined, overturned, and recumbent folds. We move on. The next basis under geometric classification, the deep of the limbs. We have defined the limbs of a fold as that area between the hinge and adjacent inflection point. Or better see the sides of the fold. The inclination, which is the deep, may be different on both limbs as they may be the same. We take the first example here. This axial line here divides this fold into two limbs. One limb to the left, the other limb to the right. If we look at inclination, these limbs are inclined from the horizontal by approximately the same amount. When the two limbs have almost the same deep, the fold is described as symmetrical. The word deep can be replaced with limb length. In other words, a symmetrical fold can also be described as a fold whose limbs have almost the same length. If their lengths are almost the same, it means their inclinations are almost the same. We take the second case here, where we notice clearly that one of the limbs, that to the left, is shorter compared to that to the right. 
At the same time, the limb that is shorter has a higher dip than the limb that is longer. When the dip of the two limbs of a fold differ greatly, that fold is described as being asymmetrical. In other words, when the two limbs do not have the same length, that fold is described as being asymmetrical. Folds can also be overturned when their limbs are inverted. But here, under this, we take into account symmetrical, asymmetrical, and those that have limbs inverted. So this classification is based on the amount of inclination of limbs or the limb length. We move to the next basis of classification under geometric classification of folds, which is continuity of axial surface. The fold, the various layers that constitute a fold, might have a common or a continuous axial surface as seen here. This line here is common for all these folds here. So in this case, their axial surface is continuous. When the axial surface of a series of layers in a folded structure is continuous, that fold is described as being harmonic in a way to say the various folds exist in harmony. If we look at the situation here, none of these layers have axial line or axial surface that is continuous with the next layer. In this situation where the axial layers or the axial surfaces are not continuous, there is no continuity, we describe the fold as being this harmonic. That said, we move to nature of fold profile. The shape of the folded layer observed from a plane perpendicular to its axis, to the fold axis, can help us group folds, either as parallel or concentric folds, similar folds, angular folds, or box folds. We have the images here. Parallel folds, as shown on A, are folds that are defined by semicircles. They form an arc whose center is the radius of a semicircle. We have A here, parallel folds. We have similar folds. Similar folds here, they get thickened at their crest and thinner at their limbs. We have box folds. These are folds that come in a rectangular manner. And if we draw the axial line of the various folds here, we find their axial line intersecting. The axial line drawn here and the axial line drawn here, they will intersect. That is a typical characteristic of a box fold. We have here angular fold or the chevron variety with very sharp hinges and straight limbs. We also have folds described according to their shapes. Zigzag folds, M folds, S folds, Z folds. Then we have conjugate folds. As the name signifies, we have two folds that have been conjugated there. These are fold types based on the nature of their profile. We take interlim angle, which is the angle formed by the intersection of a tangent drawn from the point of inflection to the fold surface. Depends on the deep arrow if we have a map. On the map, we can have deep arrows on both sides of the limbs of a fold. To determine the interlim angle, 
we take the sum of the average values on the two limbs then we deduct it from 180 degrees that will give us the interlimb angle on the basis of interlimb angle folds have been grouped as gentle folds those with interlimb angle greater than or equal to 120 gentle as the name implies they have a gentle sloping profile broad folds between 90 and 120 open folds between 60 and 90 close folds between 10 and 60 and tight folds when the interlimb angle is less than 10. interlimb angle zero we have isoclinal folds characterized by limbs that are parallel to one another that said we look at images of these various types of folds here we have a gentle fold here an open fold here we have a closed fold tight fold and isoclinal fold these are the varieties of folds that we have described above we move now from geometric classification to genetic classification which takes into account the forces responsible for the formation of fold or the origin of fold. On this basis, we are going to group fold as diastrophic or non-diastrophic. Diastrophic varieties will be those that are linked to tectonic forces. And so far, the folds we have described earlier on constitute diastrophic varieties, those that are produced by forces of tectonism. We've made mention of harmonic, we have made mention of disharmonic, stigmatitic, parasitic folds, anticlinorium and synclinorium. All of these are folds that result from tectonic activities. So here we take an image, even though we had seen all of this earlier on, we have here flow folds, we have parasitic folds, we have anticlinorium and synclinorium. All of these folds are linked to tectonic activities. We take now a particular look at non-diastrophic folds. These are folds whose formation have nothing to do with forces of tectonism, but rather they have something to do with forces of gravity. Under non-diastrophic folds, we make mention, we can make mention of gravity collapse structures. This is common, especially in sedimentary formations. We talk of convolute bedding. Gravity can cause collapse and beds become folded and mixed up. We talk of salt domes and diapis. A salt dome, because of its buoyancy, usually rises and acts upward causing the folding of strata that are overlying. Such fold is not produced by tectonism, but rather by the rise of a salt diapy. We talk of valley bulging and cambering, which are common structures, especially when a competent bed overlies an incompetent bed. A recall should be made that we have described the notion of competence and incompetence. An incompetent bed flows during the formation and a competent bed fractures. So if a competent bed overlies an incompetent bed, the weight of the competent bed can cause the incompetent bed to flow. Usually such flow occurs and protrudes within valleys. Reason it is given the name valley bulging. When that happens, the support under the competent bed is lacking. The competent bed will now fracture and downwap to produce what we call cambering. So cambering and valley bulges are structures that result from activities of flow during the formation under gravity. That said, we take a recall of what we have 
discussed during our lesson 90, classification of folds. Folds have been grouped on the basis of geometry. They are spatial position and uh, genetics, the forces responsible for their formation. As we recall, on the basis of uh, geometry, we have group force of folds based on closure direction, position of axial plane, limb length or dip of limbs, continuity of axial surface, nature of fold profile, and interlimb angle. On the basis of genetics origin, we have said folds can be formed by tectonic forces, which we call them diastrophic, or by activities of gravity, which we call them non-diastrophic. We now examine some exercises to test the understanding of our lesson 90, titled Classification of Folds. Exercise 1. Which of the following fold element depends on the deep arrow values? 180 minus sum of average deep values on both limbs. A vivid recall should be made about tightness and interlimb angle. A. Tightness. B. Trend. C. Symmetry. D. Curvature. Our correct answer is A. The expression above is a method of determining interlimb angle. An interlimb angle tells us whether a fold is gentle, open, tight, or close. Exercise 2. If a folded sandstone bed dips at 54 degrees and 41 degrees on opposite limbs, what is the interlimb angle, dis what is the interlimb angle? Describe its tightness. Note should be taken here that we are supposed to sum these two values given, then we deduct it from 180. Whatever value that is left, we are going to comment on it based on our classification, based on interlim angle, whether it's open, gentle, or close. Here, if we add these two values and deduct it from 180 degrees, we we'll have a correct answer, C. 85 degrees and values within this range constitute open fold. 3. What is the symmetry of the folded sandstone bed with dips at 54 degrees and 41 degrees on opposite limbs? Here, we are comparing the limb, the dip of the opposite limbs that defined the fold. A recall should be made that we said if the deep values differ greatly, then the fold is asymmetrical. If we have a close relation as far as the deep values are concerned, then the fold is symmetrical. 54 and 41, the difference is great. So the answer is B. Our fold is asymmetrical. Question 4. Which of the folds below falls under the non-diastrophic class? Upright fold, recumbent fold, gravity fold, box fold. Note should be taken that the non diastrophic class are formed under the influence of gravity. So C is our correct answer. Question 5 Anticlines and synclines are fold types classified based on A. Direction of closure of limbs, B. Attitude of axial plane. C. Shape and axis of surface. D. Nature of fold profile. Our correct answer here is A. We define anticlines, synclines, antiforms, synforms based on direction of closure of limbs. As assignment, with the aid of diagrams, classify folds based on mode of formation or origin, direction of closure of limbs, Attitude of axial plane and interlimb angle. This brings us to the end of our lesson 90, titled Classification of Folds. Our next lesson shall be on structures associated to folds. 
see you in our next lesson unna tege si ma tege yo unna tege min ga ma tege nyum unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom ma ne tambia ni nya ne njobya yen ngani ba na ma tege mot ngani la kiri wa tege ndom esa kina bia dinki do ma ne tambia ni nya ne njobya yen tam tam mot tam zabi ke Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bien ni nya ne injo bien